Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. I'm super excited, we've got an awesome episode coming up. Uh, we're gonna talk about steppers again, uh, but first off, I wanted to say a big thanks. It's really cool to see the, uh, the reactions and feedback on the episode I just published on the sort of ultimate accuracy on stepper motors and playing with that project. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce that project in this video as we talk about steppers some more, but the enthusiasm is, is incredible, it's, it's contagious, and uh, a number of people have actually dug into the Arduino libraries and found errors in them, and uh, you guys are amazing. I, I don't even have the, the horsepower to do that kind of stuff, so um, absolutely love it, guys. We're gonna look at the accuracy thing again, a little bit different flavor this time in light of the project itself. We're gonna hook up the oscilloscope, and we're gonna look at some of those output pulses, which is super cool, and. Uh, almost a little bit beyond my own usual repertoire, but super fun. We're gonna go back to the original way of controlling the Arduino, but we're gonna do it with a lead screw this time. So we're gonna look at how accurate that is and some math behind micro-stepping in the lead screw. And then finally, we'll do an overview of this uh, auto saw project itself. But before I dig in, um, I wanted to say a big thank you to uh, two guys. One is Brad over at Tactical Keychains. Uh, I've talked about him before. He's run a number of awesome Kickstarter projects. He's a fellow Tormach user, and we've become buddies. And uh, he had sent me some stuff, and in it, he included uh, some really awesome stuff. Here's a uh, burp cloth, and uh, this is really cool as well. It is a uh, wipe carry case. So uh, sorry for all the other non-parents out there that don't care about this stuff. But um, the coolest thing is Brad's wife, Brandy, made all this stuff. A big thank you to you guys. It's really nice uh, and really generous. And then uh, the infamous John Grimsmo over at Grimsmo Knives. Uh, he and I uh, were talking. He's a fellow Tormach user as well. We've become buddies. He sent me some stuff. We were working on some grinding uh, stuff together. And uh, in, the, in the package showed up a number of onesies, including my favorite, which is My Dad Can Fix Anything. So, John, a big thanks to you. I really appreciate it. Uh, John makes some beautiful knives, so if you guys are interested in that, check out uh, John's website, which you can see here. Again, I just wanted to say thank you. The comments, the feedback, the likes, the energy, is it makes me love doing this and taking the time to make and edit these videos. So thank you for that. Uh, I've had a number of uh, emails and, and questions about my background, which is funny because I get so many people saying, what did you focus in or where did you train? Where did you learn? And I kind of wanted to say, guys, this is, this is what it's all about. Learn on YouTube, go get your hands dirty. Uh, I went to college, but didn't study any engineering or any electrical or mechanical stuff in college. And I never, don't have any formal training. Uh, I'm self-taught and I, I don't mean that in any way to boast, but in a way that uh, if I can do it, you can. So uh, I learned a lot on the online forums, even before YouTube was so popular. Um, YouTube's a great resource now, and their machine is far better than I am on their publishing great stuff. You know, Tubal Cain, Keith Fenner, uh, ABOM79, et cetera. So uh, there's no excuse, folks. Get out there and learn and have fun. Diving into this episode, I think it's going to make sense first to take a look at the oscilloscope, and we can compare the code that we were getting from the straight pulsing to the code with the Acel stepper. So let's dive in. Okay, we're on the scope here, and again, these are this is pushing outside of my comfort zone, but um, I've used the scope before for some projects where it's been really helpful, and I think this should be really cool. I have got the scope, just so you guys see, the, um, the clip here is probe is connected to this step pin coming out of my Big Easy driver, and you'll see later on the video that setup if you need to see more about the stepper itself, and then the l other little clip, alligator clip coming off of that, is connected to the ground. So that's all we've got. And what I wanted to do though, and I wanted to say thank you, there was a user who helped me find the settings on the scope for this, and I wanna walk through those. I've got it set to 200, might be a little hard to read that, 200 millivolts, and the time is 250 uh, US, I think it's nanoseconds or something. Um, but there were some settings that were important. So we'll hit the trigger menu button over here. And we changed the type to edge. Source remains channel one. The slope needs to be this up option. And the mode is normal versus say auto. So hit normal, go to menu and turn our menu off there. Now, when we run our stepper, we should see the signal. Okay, sorry, the signal was disappearing, but I got it 
back here. So when we run our stepper, you can see the interval, and that's uh, up and down on the 250 amount. And then what's cool is I'm actually running the stepper speed of 250, so 250 microseconds. And let's move that to 125. I'll update the code, and that should now become exactly half of that uh, x-axis or horizontal width. Done uploading. So cool. You can see it's exactly half, which I think is awesome. Um, and you can also see it's a nice, crisp, sharp rise and fall, and uh, that's all I really can, can say about this. But hopefully uh, you guys who are in the know on this stuff can comment more below. Now, let's upload the Acel stepper code that I was having problems with. And a lot of folks have had a lot of interesting ideas about the floating point integers and, and rounding issues and, and, and compounding errors. Uh, what's interesting, though, is that all of those problems would be to some extent repeatable and not as random as the distances seemed to be. Um, but I've got an update of that on that as well later in this video. But uh, let's go ahead and update that to cell stepper code and look at what our uh, scope looks like. So we had our nice boxy, I think of it as like a PWM uh, rise and fall uh, with our manual pulsing. Uh, here is the uh, cell stepper, and I'm hoping you'll be able to hear it quite well with my mic up next to the stepper. And you can see that the pattern is very interesting. Um, and again, guys, I'm a novice at this, so it's really cool, but I'm hoping you guys can kind of tell me if this shows more about what's happening right or wrong or uh, what we can deduce from this. So here we go. It's cool, though. You can see the lines space in and space out with the SLD cell which I don't like. The whole thing still sounds and is jerky. Uh, I have to think that that may be something wrong with the way I'm controlling it with the big easy driver or the micro stepping or whatever. Um, my conclusion is that I actually don't really care right now at least because the Accel Decel and using the Accel library is not going to be an important part of this project. So rather than go down that uh, rabbit hole of worrying about something that's not important, uh, we're going to get some great results, and I want to focus on this auto salt project. So happy to pursue what we learn, and I'm, and I'm going to share when I do figure out what's going on with this SL Decel uh, library for sure, and appreciate everyone's help on fixing the code per se. But let's hop back on track here and look at this auto saw. Here she is. So I'm not introducing the project formally in the sense that I'm going to do a separate video on the whole build. Uh, but for you guys that uh, are, are already following along, I, I definitely wanted to share some of the work I've been doing on it as it relates to these separate challenges and uh, automation challenges. I've got it in the render mode, which I'll turn off so we can uh, play with the model a little. The red piece in this instance is the work is the work piece that's being cut. Um, and to jump forward, um, my plan of, or design philosophy, I've got a specific need, so I'm designing this saw to cut this particular type of material. That relates to the feed, the feed slot right here, and the drive mechanism, and the saw, uh, the saw blade itself, the tubes per inch, and the uh, the feed rate, all that stuff. Yes, of course. Once I get this thing built and working, I plan to make something a little bit more bigger and a little bit more modular to handle not only different sizes and shapes, but um, types of materials. Which, as you can imagine, you know, cutting tubing is different than um, flat bar, which is different than solid, you know, square bar, which is different, you know, aluminum is different than steel, and the list goes on. But I am having fun, and guys, I love this. Probably the most exciting thing I've ever built, um, or in the process of building. You already saw from the video last week, this is the feed stepper mechanism, and I'm playing with this design. I'm not happy with it as it is. Um, it actually might work. Uh, I think there's some room for improvement. Uh, I will use some type of an adjustable limit switch. As you see here, this is just a rough design. So um, the risk of sharing this stuff right now is that uh, I don't want you guys to jump all over me um, on bad ideas, yet I also welcome, by all means, critiques and inputs and all that. Really simple. There's a stepper down here that moves that with a lead screw, the cutting head, if you will. There's a motor on the back. Here's your blade. And uh, the creative idea I think I've got is you do want to support the work piece. I'm going to try to support it only on the inside of the cut and let the outside free float. We'll, we'll see if that works. But the way to do that economically and, and intelligently is uh, 
this idea I've got here, which is a spring-loaded piece. Uh, I've got to have it uh, offset here because the shaft runs through. We'll switch to a wire view and you can see the um, motor shaft runs through, so you've got to have it um, the z-axis shaft there offset back. Um, but the idea is that when it comes down, it will compress against the workpiece and it will touch the workpiece and compress that spring as the uh, blade cuts through the material. So that's the rough overview of the project. Much, much, much more to come on this. Super excited about it. Uh, but what I wanted to do today is talk a little bit about using a threaded lead screw with steppers and Arduinos to calculate distances. Let's see how accurate that is using some of our machinist tools. And then finally, I wanted to get into the micro stepping with these big easy drivers. I learned something about that this past week. And then lastly, take a look at uh, calculating correct distances using the micro steps and, and the uh, steps of the stepper motor itself. So uh, without that, let's continue on here. So here's our setup. This should look somewhat familiar based on the last video. What we've added is a second stepper motor underneath the uh, platform here and then this uh, head assembly. And as you can see, when we push our buttons, that rotates the head assembly up and down. Let's zoom in a little bit here and take a look at that itself. So this is not complete yet, but it's a one inch aluminum block and I've machined and, and bored the shaft hole through it. I'll have two roller bearings on each side to support it. The motor mount here on the left, and then I've got two pieces of drill rod that run on linear bearings, and then I have a simple quarter 20 lead screw. So certainly nothing uh, accurate or fancy like a ground ball screw, but uh, we'll take a look here at the results and I think you'll see it should work uh, pretty well for now. Again, up and down like so. And we'll zoom in here on our dial indicator and I'll show you. So we're on zero right there. We go down, back up, down, back up, down, back up, down, back up. Incredibly accurate. No surprises there. Uh, for the stepper, I'm actually really pleased that the, the, the uh, thread pitch and fit of the between the quarter 20 rod and the quarter 20 nut are, are that consistent. So that's a good surprise. Next, what I wanted to do was make sure I understood what was going on on the thread pitch and the distances so that not only are we moving accurately, but we can actually move a controlled distance. So I had a problem at first. The big easy driver, which I really like from SparkFun, is sold at that it defaults to 1 16th inch micro steps. And you can see on the product page at SparkFun, there's this builder tutorial, which I really like. And it talks about that right here. Defaults to 16 steps, micro steps. This is a 200 step stepper motor. So 16 micro steps means 16 times 200 is 3200 steps per revolution for one single revolution of the motor shaft. That's not what I was getting. So I went ahead and looked, as you can see here, as we zoom in on the pads, these MS1, 2, and 3 uh, connections, I took my multimeter on its voltage uh, setting and put the ground to the ground on the board and then tapped these three pads. 1 16th step should read high, 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 as you can see in that chart. I was getting low, high, high. Uh, now, low, high, low would be quarter step, uh, but MS3, it seems, perhaps uh, the way this is designed is, is not as, uh, it didn't matter. I was in quarter step mode, um, and that was happening consistently. So I'm not, uh, that might be odd, but I, um, it, quarter step mode is fine for me right now, and I can, I'm sure, could jump these high and, and adjust it as needed. But for now, I wanted to focus on the task at hand, which was, Let's take this little Excel chart here, and we've got a 20 inch th thread per inch lead screw. The motor itself is 200 steps per revolution. We're micro stepping at uh, one quarter or four. So that means you need 800 steps per one revolution, which means if you divide one revolution over 20, you should move 50 thousandths per, per revolution. So in the Arduino code right now, we're running 600 steps. So that should mean I take 600 divided by 800, so I'm going three quarters of a revolution, which means I should be moving 375 thousandths of an inch. So let's go see if that's true, and then we'll adjust this again and see if that holds true. 
I meant to mention as well for you non-machinists folks out here, this uh, indicator we're using here is called a dial indicator. Um, and this one is a relatively inexpensive one. So if you're interested in making precision measurements like this, you could purchase these from uh, a company like Enco, E-N-C-O, or even off eBay uh, with a magnetic base holder, which as you can see, which I've got here on a granite surface block. So I've got a little magnetic uh, or steel plate that lets me serve as a magnet. But if you, you know, rotate this, you can then move the thing around and then rotate your dial back on and it stays in place, you know, relatively uh, stable. So uh, the cool thing about this too, is you can see we're just a tick past zero. So rather than try to rotate our bezel, what we can do is just use our, and you can see how sensitive even touching it bumps it around. But you can twist this screw and get us right on zero. Now there's some level of false precision with this because like I said, even just breathing, you know, even just doing that bumps the needle a fair amount. So these are very precise. Anyways, what we're gonna do now is go ahead and move and we should move 600 steps, which we said was 37 and a half thousand. Boom, right there, maybe half a thou shy. Back to zero, spot on. Back to 37, so that's awesome. Uh, let's take a look at uh, a different unit. Okay, let's try 200 now and see what we get. So we'll put 200 and we should move 125 thou. I also wanted to mention when you're measuring uh, with a device like this for repeatability, the angle of the rod or shaft to the part isn't quite as important. But what we're trying to do today is to actually measure distance moved. So you wanna take a square, and I can actually see that we're not perfectly uh, square. So what we can do is actually adjust these are square this way. Perfect, a little bit better. And then we can adjust our bezel. Okay, hopefully that's a little more accurate even. So now we are at 200 steps, so we should move to the 12 or 12 and a half line. Boom, that's spot on. So I think that's really darn cool. Uh, it's very responsive, it's very accurate, it's very repeatable. It's cool to see that we can move accurately in the micro stepping type mode. So goes without saying folks, super excited about this project, super excited to see uh, the involvement that you guys have uh, made in the first video and I'm hoping to see more in this video below. I do appreciate the likes, the comments, the input, the feedback. Uh, I'm really excited to get this thing making parts and I'll be sure again to post a lot more uh, on that and the lessons I learn. Um, so again, I appreciate everything with that. Uh, that's a wrap, however, one little nugget of reward I wanted to share for the folks that are uh, st still sitting here listening through. I um, wanted to let you guys know that I'm moving the shop. So more to come. I'll make more formal announcement, but I, I figure I'd throw that teaser out there now. Anyways, uh, enjoy, folks. Have a great weekend. Take care. See you soon.